few months ago, we had a lot of sensational headlines in kind of the YouTube world about carbon fiber filaments and how they could, if you handle them, leave those small filaments in your skin. And that's kind of terrifying. I mean, I've done a lot of stupid things over my life. Like as a teenager playing with electronics, I would use my teeth to strip wires. That was dumb. Common dental recommendation uh, of ele against electricians. Don't do it. Let it solder. In fact, I was trained for like strain gauges specifically, and they still do this with let it solder, but I don't use that anymore. And more recently, I've started moving to engineering grade materials. And when I say engineering grades, specifically for me, I mean nylons. Uh, I modified previous printers to be able to get hot enough to do nylon. Uh, I bought a, uh, a Bamboo Labs X1C to replace my old ones, especially with this capability of doing nylon. Um, this is all, all really well and good, but now I'm, for a specific reason, moving to a lot of uh, PA6 glass fiber. Um, not carbon fiber, but glass fiber. And, and there's a few reasons for this, lower cost, uh, cheapness, but also it's, it, it's kind of this great blend of toughness in its wet state. I'll get into that a little bit more. So I'm on the second generation of, of this thing, we'll call FT2 for now until I actually reveal what it is. And the first version of it, I guess the FT1, it had a lot of problems. Uh, specifically, if I did anything wrong with the motors or they got hot, uh, PLA would start melting. And then moving to ABS, that still kind of caused problems. And if it melts, the motors sag. If the motors sag, the gears come out of alignment. Then they chew the gears to pieces. And I have to disassemble the whole thing in order to replace those gears. It's not, it's not good. Nylon solves a lot of this because it's super temperature resistant. Like you can go 140, 150. Um, I've found new uses for PA6, GF25. Uh, for, for things that I do constantly because I can put it in an oven. Um, so really kind of interesting. So I built this prototype with PLA like I did the last one, but it's designed so that I can move to PA6 glass fiber. Nylons generally require very dry materials. Otherwise, they don't really print and they pop and they absorb moisture so easily that you, you end up with basically a mess coming out. And the other side of that is if you print your support materials, if they, they touch nylon to nylon, well, as they absorb moisture that could be happening in an, especially an open air print chamber or lack of print chamber, you end up with uh, the Z layers bond even stronger together. So, so you actually get stronger Z layer bonding. That's really great for like your, 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 your part. It's kind of absolutely terrible for support material. So I really, I've wanted a dual nozzle printer for ages. So I thought this whole like dual nozzle thing, I can solve this problem modern technology and money can be thrown away directly into the fire of making cool stuff. I mean, what if we made the exterior out of one material that is safe for us and make the interior of the stuff with the mechanical properties we want? And I even, even thought to myself that like, this could be really great for, for gears because there's obviously a lower coefficient of friction with pure nylon than glass fiber nylon, right? We'll get to that. Now, if you're doing your own work in CAD, this is easy. I mean, it might be easy to do with some slicer, some Python script with a, in some of these slicers. I, I didn't really go that route. I, I just took my CAD model and let's take a, a really complicated thing. So I've got a hearing bone gear. So a hearing bone gear is basically a helical gear that's flipped in the middle and they're self-centering, which is really great especially with the tolerances in 3D printing. So if you clone your part, most CAD software has a shelling tool and we shell it to the thickness we want, just a smidge thicker than what your nozzle will do. So if you have a 0.4 nozzle, you usually have to do at least a 0 0.43, 0 0.45 millimeter wall. So to give yourself a little room, call it 0.5 and now we've got the exterior wall. I'm not doing the top and bottom just so that you can see it in 
in reality that these are two materials. Once you do that, your inside is kind of wrong. Um, and maybe some of the software, the slicer software can deal with this. I haven't really checked. But if we intersect those bodies and just leave the, the non-intersecting part, then we get exactly what we want. An exterior layer of this super complicated shape interior layer that matches up. Uh, hopefully there's enough minimal distance. You, you want, you know, at least 0 0.4, 0 0.5 on the bits that extend into the gears. And then we can slice it, but use two materials and use two materials that are on two different nozzles. The reason, I mean, you can do this. You can do all of this with a single nozzle system with an AMS, but anyone who's actually used it to do multicolor printing it takes a lot. You have to purge a lot of material. Nylon is expensive. Carbon fiber or, or nylon is very expensive. Glass fiber nylon is still more expensive. It's in between. You don't really want to be throwing that away. The, and time. It can take hours to do this on, a, on my X1C, but my H2D, eh, it's fine. And voila, we now have a gear where if I touch the gear teeth, no embedded glass fibers or carbon fibers in, in me. And the interior gets most of the strength. So back to that point of maybe I was wrong on, on being so clever about doing gears like this. Yeah. So I found a few papers and it, it turns out that really glass fiber doesn't increase friction very much except at the very beginning. Long-term life analysis will tend to be that they both come down and, you know, the glass fiber sometimes in, in tests basically ends up exactly the same, if not sometimes better because the glass fibers are a little more slippery somehow. So there, there was no real mechanical benefit. I thought I got to be clever there, but coming back to the whole, well, now, we, we've solved the exterior touching problem. And maybe we have. I just haven't convinced myself I have because I then went and I took my filaments from Polymaker in glass fiber and carbon fiber and the regular nylon and I, I've been handling them so I figured no problem. Uh, I've got tweezers, I've got a really cool microscope, Let, let's go. I, I didn't see anything in my skin. In fact, especially handling 3D printed objects that, that like the, the base surface, I can't even see the glass fibers. And I think that they're so embedded in there when they're extruded, they want to flow through the center and, and so they're pulled off the walls. And I don't know if this is legit, but in handling all my carbon fiber and glass fiber, I, I can't find any embedded stuff in, in my hands. I, I think that there is a difference, especially they were doing a lot of PLA and PETG, and they may not hold or, or the manufacturing process of those brands may be different than the brands that I'm using. Now, if I'm gonna cut or drill or sand any of this, yeah, those fibers can get out. You, you really need your proper PPE. But that's general how you have to deal with any fibrous based materials. You, you wanna make sure you're keeping your lungs and your skin and your body safe. I think this method can help. And I think for people who are concerned uh, about the imprinted state, it can help. Like easily you could PLA carbon fiber you can go to town and then do your whole exterior in regular PLA. This also gives you the benefit of probably wider ranges of colors. And it, you know, if you are very happy and you don't, don't want to waste those colors, you can use whatever generic interior material. I think there's still a benefit to using this technique. I just haven't seen it with the, the carbon fiber and the glass fiber nylons. I think, I think the short end of this is be careful, you know, you're, if you're, you're handling this stuff on a daily basis, be careful of, of handling the filaments and the, the printed materials. Um, I'm, I kind of have become comfortable with the materials that I use on a daily basis now, but that doesn't mean that 
you're going to have that same level of comfort or also doesn't mean that every brand is going to be the same here. So be careful out there. Hopefully this technique is useful and I hope you learned something.